This is my case study assignment, Interuse, Internet Use Violations uh, for EDL 850, and my name is Josh Cooper. So uh, to start off with, um, what is known in this case? Well, Miss Cindy Walker uh, is a new science teacher at Roosevelt High School. Um, she is a first-year teacher. Um, while she is older than most teachers, she's the first-year teacher. Uh, she went back, uh, she went uh, for graduate school and a master's before she uh, ended up applying for any jobs. Um, her rigorous courses and method of teaching has created high stress for her students, um, her students and parents' uh, complaints. Uh, the principal, Dr. Forbes, has received numerous complaints from students and parents um, complaining about uh, the teacher's rigor and uh, lack of uh, methodology in her teaching. And in her second year, she received an email at the beginning while she was on holiday uh, from an unknown sender with a link to a web page, and she went to it and saw that it had inappropriate comments um, and, and use of vulgar language uh, towards her. So she calls the principal and forwards him the email. Uh, he does a good job at calming her down and suggesting that it was a prank, um, and that, it's, uh, that it's not serious because she is worried about some of the language that we use. Um, and she basically thinks it was a particular student involved. Um, so he asked if there was a particular student involved and and she identifies a possible student, um, but with no real uh, evidence. Uh, the principal prints off the email website and website uh, information and tells Mrs. Walker that they're going to meet with the students uh, and friends in the morning to, to move forward. They're trying to identify um, who was in, involved and how, how this happened. Um, they also might ask the district IT personnel to help identify uh, the email and create it at the website um, to see if you can be in that event. So uh, what needs to be known? Well, we need to know who sent the email, who created the websites, um, were they the same people, but they could have been different people. Uh, was it a student that did this? We're guessing so. Was the student identified actually responsible? Um, what were the specific comments that were on the websites? Um, I think we only just saw a couple, so just wondering what else was on there. Did students create this at home or at school? Um, and is it even possible for an IT personnel to identify the creator? So, problem identification, basically three things. Dr. Forbes, the principal, has received numerous complaints from students and parents about Ms. Walker's class workload and poor instruction. Um, obviously, this is one of the, the main issues of the problem. And then uh, that leads to uh, the main identified problem, which is an inappropriate web page is created about Miss Walker that uses vulgar language, uh, and then the principal also needs to investigate the issue to see who created it and send an email, and uh, created it and sent the email to Miss Walker. So uh, my proposed plan of action um, is to speak with an IT specialist first to so help identify um, who sent the email to see if this is possible. I think this is an important step first before actually moving forward and talking with students as this is uh, help us gather more information. Uh, review identified students' cumulative file just to see you know what's going on with the student that she thinks um, might be um, possibly irresponsible. Uh, review our policies and internet use and discipline procedures in the handbook to see what needs to be happen happening to uh, move forward if we find an identified um, person that was responsible. Depending on the outcome with the IT specialist, meet with students then to help identify the creator. Obviously, if the IT specialist cannot do anything, we need to then move forward and start talking with students to help in, to try to investigate the problem um, and see if we can figure out who is responsible. Modify our internet use policies and procedures as necessary according to federal law to ensure that we are following um, the federal law is going to be um, you know, pertinent towards keeping our federal funding. And then meeting with IT specialists to discuss possible safeguards and things that we can put in place to help, um, you know, move forward with and solve and uh, resolve these possible and I guess minimize these situations in the future. And then move forward with discipline um, if a student is um, found guilty. And then set up systems to help Miss Walker improve as a teacher, um, really because this is the root of the problem as well. 
So some strategies, utilize the IT department to help solve the problem, adhere to policies and procedures, uh, provide support to teachers and staff, collect and gather information before moving forward. Uh, collaboration with staff and students is a huge part of this process. And then I think just being proactive to help identify possible solutions and, and ways to minimize these issues in the future. So how do I promote the success of all students? I think just in collecting the information um, before moving forward in conversation with students is going to set them up for success. We do not want to start having conversation with students before we have more information. Um, review and modify internet use policies. This is going to protect the students and promote the success of them in the long run um, to make them safer. Uh, collaborate with students and staff to help solve the problem um, and to help uh, Ms. Walker progress as a teacher is going to really uh, be beneficial and, and uh, helpful in the success of all the students. What was I thinking and valuing as I responded to this problem? I appreciated the support of the Principal Forbes has given to Ms. Walker. Um, it seems like she was struggling and, her, she, and he knows it and he's continued to support her in this process. Um, I feel bad that Ms. Walker being a new teacher and is not, uh, that she's a new teacher and she's not in an ideal situation. We all know this is definitely something that, uh, you know, teachers go through in the first year where they, you know, struggle. So uh, I feel bad for her. I don't understand why people decide to be so unkind in their actions. You know, as a teacher, I've grown to be, I think, more mature and kind in the way I treat people, and I just don't understand how you know, they make these decisions. So what issues are still unresolved? Um, well, will the IT specialist be able to identify the creator of the website? We don't know that. Is a student identified actually responsible? I'm guessing there's a big percentage you know, no, and possibly a small percentage yes, because it's just based off of, hey, this is someone in the class. I think it's more students, or it's not just one student that's responsible for all of this, but who knows. Uh, and then who actually sent the email or created the website? And what can be done to help Ms. Walker in the classroom improve and progress as a teacher? So reflections on standard five. Um, how did the administrator demonstrate a sense of integrity and ethical behavior as a model for the school community? Um, the administrator sought to find the truth about who was responsible for the email. I think that just shows integrity. Uh, followed proper procedures and policies on internet use. Um, this, you know, is definitely is ethical behavior. And worked to support Ms. Walker in the process. Um, you know, this is just integrity and and model and being a model for the school community to support its teachers. How did the building level administrator treat people fairly, equitably, and with dignity and respect? Um, the administrator supported and respected Ms. Walker through this issue. Again, I, I just think that is super important. And this is, you know, treating, treating people with dignity and respect and teachers that are struggling just because, you know, they're not perfect, especially as, uh, as we as teachers start off on our first several years. Gathering information before moving forward. Uh, I think this is key uh, to be able to be fair and equitable um, and respectful in this process before moving forward any sort of discipline procedures. And adhered to policies and procedures throughout this process, again, um, that's just absolutely um, the only thing that's equitable and fair uh, in this process. And last but not least, how did the building level administrator um, demonstrate a personal and professional code of ethics? Uh, one thing is that they dealt with a parent and student complaints in a professional and ethical manner. Uh, it seems that um, Dr. Forbes did a, an absolute wonderful job in support of his teacher and just to deal with these complaints in a, in a professional manner. Ensured that internet use policies and procedures are in line with federal law. Um, you know, this is, goes right in line with ethics and making sure that we are following our guidelines that we have set forth, uh, that we had set forth for us by the federal government. And then move forward with discipline of students responsible for the email, um, I think just demonstrates, um, you know, that the building level administrator is you know, adhering to a code of ethics um, set forth by the school.